see this now, dude? Huh? Out! That is a five to two victory over the Vancouver Canucks. Welcome back to Into the Den, everybody. I'm your host, host 100 Bex. And this game, this game was interesting. This, this game was hilarious. It was just amazing. And for, I mean, what, I mean, even before the game even started, this game, uh, this was one for the history books. Because both teams come out in practice wearing white jerseys. They re then realize this is going to be a problem. And, I mean, this is, this is, this was supposed to be another night that the Bruins were, uh, were going to wear their, uh, their, uh, uh, their retro reverse, their reverse retro jerseys, which Pooh Poo Bear has grown on me. Pooh Bear has grown on me. I will still be a proponent for Meth Bear. Meth Bear is very washed out on this jersey, but Pooh Bear, I love Pooh Bear. I want Pooh Bear, but they kind of realized this is going to be a problem, and so they made the Bru and so they made the Bruins change their jersey. Which is very disrespectful because one, we're the home team. We shouldn't be the ones that uh, change our uh, jersey. And second of all, we're the ones that won in 2011. We shouldn't be the ones to change our jersey. But of course, the the big thing on everybody's mind in, in this game was uh, was the fact that this was supposed to be the revenge game of Jack Stadnika. This organization failed Jack Studnika. I mean, I mean, Bruins management has uh, has uh, has failed so many players in the past. Is uh, Earl Vakanainen, Jack Studnika, uh, uh, in a way, at some points, Jacob Zaboral. But like, come on, he was supposed to, he was supposed to be our number two center uh, of the future, and we we never we never gave him him not we never gave him a decent opportunity we anytime that we actually tried to, you know, to put him up, up on a, a good line he produced nothing when he was on a when he was on a bottom line he wasn't able to want to elevate in it i mean there's definitely an argument to be made that jackson nika uh, was a uh, was a very overrated prospect and the only reason why we kept him up uh, the bruins fans kept hyping him up for so long is because is is he was uh, he was because of everything that he was supposed to be, not everything that he he had shown us. Uh, but I feel like at some point uh, something had to give, and well, give something did. So Jackson Nika, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a good time in Vancouver. Except you're probably not because Vancouver has blown six two goal leads. It's to start this season, this season alone, they uh, this season isn't even twenty games in, and they've already blown six three goal leads, uh, six two goal leads, and uh, and a couple of them have been three goal leads. It's, it's, you know how many uh, they had blown in the past two seasons combined? Six. So at some point, you gotta ask: Is this just? Is this just barbecue Bruce choking on the uh, choking on the uh, on the ribs again? Sleep here, it definitely is. But do the but do those six uh, uh, multi goal uh, uh, blown leads? And Vancouver is uh, finds themselves struggling in the uh, struggling near the bottom of the uh, Pacific. Not as bad as Anaheim, who by the way has yet to win a single game in in regulation so far this season every single game in that anaheim has played their opponents have come out of it with a point which is just amazing but uh, they're not doing as bad as anaheim but they're definitely uh, uh, but they're definitely uh, on that piss off for mitch cobb of uh, trade of uh, trade anaheim is on suck hard for bedard uh, and in vancouver is on in piss off for mitch cobb God I, God, I love tanking slogans. Tank, tanking is so fun. At least it's fun for everyone who's not involved in the tanking. Oh yeah, that's basically 
basically destroy up a line of the game I'm going in. The Bruins are best team in the league in sole possession of best record of the in the entire league thanks to thanks to Vegas blowing it blowing their uh blowing their shit against in St. Louis. It's giving them their giving earning them themselves their third loss of the season. And so Bruins are Bruins are in sole possession of the best record in the league, and in Vancouver is near the bottom. Uh, so what does Vancouver do to start off the off the game? Thatcher Demko immediately triggers a, a delay of game penalty by by chucking the puck over the ice. Is uh, is forty five seconds in. Remember when Thatcher Demko was like a was like a, a Vesna candidate like, like last year and two years ago. What happened to that version of? Uh, I gotta ask. What happened to that version of Thatcher Demko? Is is it just the defense that's in front of him, or is it uh, just him? Because I feel like uh, because yes, I know that Quinn Hughes can't play every single shift all the time. To- uh, all the time, Quinn Hughes can't play. It can't clone himself five times and have every single, uh, every single piece of himself play in a full sixty minute game. But that's not. But still. I feel like this defense should be playing better in front of uh, in front of uh, uh, one of the best goalies in the league. It's like, and as a result, old Vancouver, Vancouver, who already sucks with a uh, with a really mediocre defense, has the you know, worst penalty kill in the entire NHL. Oh, uh, and the Bruins on it get about what uh, get. The Bruins on it get get one get two actual get two goals goals on it this this game. I uh, um, um, but the first goal that they get comes off the uh, comes not long after their first uh, after the penalty uh, after they blow the penalty uh, after they blow the power play uh, even though they did get a few good shots on it. Taylor Hall just snakes his way through the entirety of uh, uh, Hampus Lindholm passes to Taylor Hall who just snakes his way through the entirety of Vancouver's defense and it's just going here 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 ooh behind the net in the net I've run out of uh, because I've run out of space to uh, just actually get a shot off and then he he passes it right to Connor Clifton who who bombs it for a one time and or and uh, to get the scoring going for the for the Bruins. Thatcher Demko was looking for a little bit of uh, goaltender interference, but it's hard to do that when uh, when Oliver Ekman Larson is just politely pushing Jake DeBrusque out of the way. And this to probably my favorite part about uh, Jim Montgomery's Bruins. Memento. Jack and Andy were talking on the broad uh, Jack and Andy were talking on the broadcast a lot about how oh uh, over the uh, during the latter half of the Cassidy era uh, the Bruins uh, kind of struggled to uh, to generate too much offense and uh, with a, a one goal lead. Uh, whenever they had a one goal lead, they would uh, usually like rest on their laurels and uh, and do uh, and uh, play uh, a more shut down defense than uh, than an actual uh, than like keep the scoring going, which is a strategy that works, but it also you know, forces you on your back foot uh, a little bit more. But the Bruins this season, no such thing. Not as uh, no such thing. They're uh, we're gonna uh, uh, no such thing. We're gonna uh, freaking go on uh, uh, all of our uh, our our power plays nowadays. All five players, uh, all five players on it are their offense for some reason. I still don't understand that. Put Mac, put Lindholm on that uh, on that top power play unit. It, He's he's getting a point per game. There's no reason why he shouldn't be on that top uh, power play unit, uh, especially because he also is now plus seventeen on the uh, on the year. Has yet to have a single game with a minus, and is, is averaging some of the highest time on ice for is per game in the league, and is and is just in general probably the closest thing that we've had to a Norris candidate since. Uh, uh, at least for this season, the closest thing that we've had to a Norris candidate since the Dan Ochara in 2009. But now, but after uh, that first, uh, but after that first goal, we get 
in probably one of the most unnecessary things I've seen in a in the Bruins. Now, yes, I really like fighting in in hockey. Fighting is actually what got me into hockey. I I started watching hockey for the fight. In the exact day, February third, two thousand eleven. February 3rd, 2011. In Bru- long-time Bruins fans, you know you know exactly what this, this game was just from the uh just from the penalty summary. So yes, I love fighting. The the fight that the fight that Tomas Nosek uh, uh, tried to initiate with Kyle Burroughs was one of the most unnecessary uh, things I've seen in a Bruins game. Because if you go back on that uh, on that hit that uh, Kyle Burrows laid on and uh, David Postnock, it is probably the cleanest that you're going to get to a uh, to a big hit uh, to a big but clean hit. And Nosek d- just decides, you know what? No, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna fight you on this. And with that, Nosek, in the span of less than a minute, racks up 17 penalty minutes. Burroughs and uh, Burroughs and Nosek are both given a, a five-minute major for fighting. And Nosek gets the extra two for oh, for the instigator penalty, and then and he gets a and then he gets an additional ten-minute misconduct penalty. <laughs> five, two, ten. That is seventeen minutes racked up of penalties in uh, in that one in fight. Insane. I love it. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, the Bruins did not love it as as they would and let in just the fourth power play goal, oh, fourth shorthanded goal that they've allowed this season. Shorthanded on their inside, it, fuck. As they would allow the fourth power play goal, oh, 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 that has gotten past them this season, and with J T. Miller, with Brendan Carlo playing way too far up, uh, up. And JT Miller's just behind everybody. He takes the puck in, just completely undresses. Just completely undresses is, is Linus Allmark, making him go uh, go far side and then uh, and bring it back to tap it in and to tie it up on one uh, at one. Bronze are gonna be little oh, extra penalty ch- chances off of a time Tyrmar's trip. Uh, trip, but they would, uh, but they would get uh, shut out on it. Uh, AJ Greer, uh, but then we're back to the fighting. AJ Greer completely beats the piss out of uh, out of Vasily uh, Podkolzin, uh, or I don't know how to pronounce that name. Podkolzin, uh, Podkolzin, and and uh, and Vasily starts bleeding all over the uh, starts. Uh, starts bleeding, which you know, it's always fun. It's always fun when uh, when hockey fights draw blood. Uh, Jackson Deacon, remember that dude? He he ends up going for tripping possum. Uh, David Pasta uh, and uh, and Pasta uh, on uh, and Pasta uh, after the Bruins spent in uh, like a good uh, minute of the power play in uh, consecutively in their in the offensive zone. Um, Pasta uh, Pasta makes a shot that uh, make, makes a maneuver that looks like a shot but is in fact a pass to Bergeron uh, who's just in the bumper to tap it uh, to just chip it uh, to just deflect it in in, in for a goal uh, to put the Bruins up 2-1 and to shorten that uh, and to uh, and to put him three points Within in striking, sneaking distance of one uh, of the one thousand point in threshold. Next to the end of the first period, and start of the second one, and Tyler Myers is, ends up tripping in Trent Frederick again. And and remember when I said in Tage Thompson was like uh, was the tallest person in hockey? Yeah, I forgot that Tyler Myers exists. He's like six eight or something like that. Why is everybody so tall? Anyway, on this one, Bo Horvat uh, dri- uh, drives to the net shorthanded, and, and Krejci accidentally gets enough of his stick up uh, near the end, uh, near the follow through, uh, to 
uh, to trigger a, uh, a high sticking penalty. We get about a minute and a half of uh, four on four play, and uh, and we all know oh everybody's favorite bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. There's Zaka and Lindholm trade passes to each other, uh, and on and Lindholm's pass it is to Zaka. Zaka, uh, Pavel Zaka just. Is bats it right into the goal. Oh, oh after Vancouver er, does one of the worst line changes I've seen since, since you know, since that one that Marshan did in 2019. I mean, one of the worst line changes I've ever seen, and it allows uh, and allows the Bruins to and uh, say put it to a three one, uh, to put it to three. Yeah, Vancouver plays a really really sloppy game. And Quinn Hughes takes a, takes a penalty for for playing with a, a broken stick, and then uh, and then freaking Tyler Myers just floats the puck over the net. Uh, it just floats the puck over the glass. Uh, it's like, why are you taking all these unnecessary penalties? And especially on that Tyler Myers is go is penalty. Pasta gets a. Uh, like right off the face off, Pasternak gets a gets a passing lane as wide as the freaking four oh five. Like you could put you could put two two Corollas and a semi through that gap and and still have room for and still have room for a breakdown lane in in it and and Bert Marshan just just, dri- just drills it short side against. And Statue Demko to put the Bruins up 4 1 and to close up. Into the third we go. Uh, Jacob Zaboral uh, coming off a game in which he scores his first NHL goal and becomes the 19th player on the Bruins to score a goal this uh, this season. And, and ends up going for high sticking. And Bruins get some really good chances in his shorthanded. Oh, yeah, that's right. Vancouver also has the worst penalty. Oh, yeah, I think I already. I think I already said that Vancouver has the worst penalty kill in the league. But yeah, but yeah, Bruins get some really good chances on uh, on the short side, and then uh, and then we get uh, the uh, the unfortunate uh, the unfortunate chip in, uh, own chip in. Uh, Sheldon Dries is, is is like at the bottom of the faceoff circles, almost almost parallel to the uh, almost parallel to the uh, to the uh. Uh, almost parallel to the uh, right line, uh, to the to the goal line, and and he's try and he's he's obviously trying to uh, to pass it uh, past Olmark to uh, to get it to Jack Stadnika, who's on the far post to uh, to chip it in, but Jack Stadnika is not needed for that because Olmark accidentally chipped uh, because it bounces off of Olmark's stick and uh, and it. And it's at the unfortunate angle to where it, it jumps into the net it, to close the deficit to two. Anyway, Pasternak ends up uh, say uh, ends up saying to Vancouver, "Oh, you, uh, uh, oh, you guys are you guys are taking a lot of penalties. Is that's uh, that sounds fun? I want to join in." And uh, he ends up floating the puck also over the uh, also over the glass is to is to give them um, a to give them a power play in the last three minutes, in the last three and a half minutes of the game. And what do you think Vancouver does? They, uh, they pull them, they pull Thatcher Demko to make it a six on four uh, for two minutes. And it's, and then the magic happens. I mean, since the Bruins were on a penalty kill, well, any, any amount of, of icing that would normally get called back, like on a six on five, uh, when they're shorthanded, the uh, when they're shorthanded in the last uh, few minutes because of an empty net, it is completely superfluous because uh, because you can't it, because the putt can't get called called back for icing on it when you're on uh, when you're shorthanded, and so uh, so what do you think that uh, so no sec no uh, knowing this pretty much just tries to is uh, clear the uh, to clear the puck as far as he can, and uh, and in doing so, puts it right on a trajectory towards that 
uh, towards that empty net. And for the first time, not just all season, but for the first time in over 300 days since the uh, since uh, since January 2nd, and and I'm pretty sure it was a game against, against the Red Wings. And for the first time since January 2nd, we have a goal from Tomas Nosek, and that puts the amount of uh, goals that the Bro uh, and that puts the amount of goal scores that the Bruins have had to 20 on the season. 5-2 Bruins, and that clears out the rest of the game. Now, I don't really want to put too much stock into this win. I mean, uh, I mean, yes, I've said it over and over again. Two points is two points is two points. A win is a win is a win. But at the same time, uh, but at the same time, again, we were playing against the worst, you know, one of the worst teams in hockey. But also, uh, it's one of those, uh, it's one of those teams where. Uh, but then again, it's one of those games where like you need to win. You need to win against the bad teams because if you don't win against the bad teams, then who then. And that doesn't, then no matter how many excuses you have for it, it just makes you look like a bunch of clowns. But the Bruins have uh, off until Thursday uh, in which they will have a, uh, a matchup against the, against the, uh, the Philadelphia Flyers who seem to have been, uh, been settling down after a, an okay start. After she says, after the Flyers just lose, it was five one to the into the Stars. But uh, but that will pretty much be the end of, uh, of tonight's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. And click like if you like. Click subscribe if you like. And like up there is my uh, up there is my most recent video. Oh, uh, check that out and uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, uh, how you feel about Jackson Nika? How you feel about Jackson Nika uh, in a uh, in a Vancouver uniform? Does it uh, does it make you sad? Does it make you nostalgic? How it makes you feel? Oh, well, well, down below is also my uh, is also my Twitch.tv and my TikTok and uh, and also on Hockey TV uh, just so that uh, you can watch this into the games the same way that I do. I really should uh, on a really uh, on really the uh, an okay enough streaming service because. Uh, nobody at Bridgewater State University really likes hockey for some reason, or maybe they do, and I'm just, uh, and I just haven't met the right people yet. But enough about the, enough about my school struggles. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys again on uh, Thursday. Take care.